California is in the middle of a major drought, and experts don't know when it will end. The past three years could end up as the driest in California's history. But at the same time, the state is suffering from major flooding. Millions of residents are still assessing the damage while more than 100,000 are without power. It barely makes sense. How can a place have droughts and floods at the same time? In this video, we'll look at this strange situation and the multi-billion dollar mega dam which the state will use to fix it. But first of all, we need to talk about water in California. When it comes to water, California doesn't have it easy. Large parts of the state are officially deserts, the Great Basin, the Mojave, and the Colorado. When the first American settlers arrived in the region a couple hundred years ago, there was so little water that they struggled to farm the land. Things aren't much different nowadays. In October 2021, the governor of California declared a statewide drought emergency. He called on citizens to reduce their water usage by 15% in the hope of getting things back on track. But in 2023, almost 18 months later, the emergency still hasn't been lifted. They've been experiencing official drought conditions for more than a thousand days. But this is only part of the story. Right in the middle of this long-running drought, California had a period of such heavy rainfall that parts of the state were hit by major floods. Towns and cities were damaged, 22 people were killed, and the governor declared another state of emergency. At this very moment, the state is in a period of emergency droughts and emergency floods at the exact same time. But how can California have two opposite states of emergency at the same time? It all comes down to water management. During periods of heavy rainfall, a large volume of water falls to the ground and floods the region, but only a small percentage is properly collected and stored. When the sun comes out again, most of the water has drained away or flowed into the sea, and the drought continues as though the rain never came at all. That's the situation California finds itself in. They can't collect enough water during the rainy months to make up for the periods of drought. Instead, they seesaw back and forth. Too much water, then too little. Too much, then too little. Again, and again, and again. The big question is, can they do anything about it? Well, they've certainly tried. In the 1950s, the state went through a similar period to the one happening now, with droughts and floods taking place in quick succession. The state decided enough was enough and established the State Water Project. This project, often known as the SWP, had a simple goal. Find a way to store water during periods of flooding so that it could be recycled during periods of drought. In the first few years, they built more than 20 dams, which allow them to collect water in giant reservoirs during periods of heavy rainfall. The most famous is probably Lake Oroville, the reservoir behind the Oroville Dam. The dam itself is the largest one in the whole of America, standing at a height of more than 200 meters, while the reservoir holds hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Another famous example is Pyramid Lake, which sits just outside Los Angeles. During periods of drought, the water collected in these giant reservoirs can be sent to farms and cities. It's an impressive process, which relies on a massive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water travels hundreds of kilometers and even crosses mountain ranges. The most famous component is the California Aqueduct, which carries water all the way from the Sierra Nevada to Los Angeles, branching off to serve millions of people along the way. At one point, the Edmonston pumping plant has to lift this water over the Tehachapi Mountains, a height of 600 meters. It's like trying to pump a river over the top of the One World Trade Center. No other pumping plant in the entire world lifts water higher than the Edmonston. Overall, it's one of the most advanced and ambitious water management systems in the entire world. But at the time of construction, in the 1960s and 70s, it was only meant to be stage one. There were plans to build more dams and canals in the 80s and 90s, but for various reasons, those projects were put on hold. It mainly came down to economics. California was struggling with rising debts, but there were other issues too, like environmental concerns. By disrupting the natural flow of rivers, these water facilities made things difficult for a number of local species. Populations of salmon and steelhead trout, which swim upriver during breeding seasons, collapsed in the wake of the SWP. With all those dams and pumping stations getting in the way, these fish can no longer reach their breeding sites. Because of all this, California decided to put the next round of construction on hold and hope the first stage of projects could do the job on their own. In the first few years, the new facilities definitely made a difference. 
about two-thirds of the water collected by the system, was given to people in urban areas, while the rest was used to irrigate orchards and farms. The entire system was estimated to provide about $400 billion to the statewide economy every single year. But in the last few years, the existing components of the state water project have started to struggle. When these components were first built, California's population was less than 20 million people. But in the last few decades, the number of people living in the state has doubled. So has the demand for water, and the dams and canals find it hard to keep up. That's part of the reason why the state has had so many recent issues with drought. In the words of Mike Wade, executive director at the California Farm Water Coalition, our water demands have increased far beyond what the system was designed to support. I look out here and I see a beautiful day by the lake. What do you see when you look at this? I see a dangerously low reservoir. Climate change isn't helping either. In the last century or so, the average temperature in California has risen by almost two degrees centigrade, leading to severe, scorching heat waves. The droughts are getting worse, the population is getting bigger, and the water management system is in desperate need of an upgrade. That's why the state has decided to build the Sites Reservoir. A few kilometers north of Sacramento is a narrow valley with cliffs and hills along both sides. The terrain is dry and scrubby, with open plains of yellowish grass and clumps of bushes and trees. There are buildings too, but not many, just a couple of clusters here and there with a handful of local residents. The settlement is marked on the map as Sites, but it isn't an official town. Now, the state wants to flood the valley and turn it into a lake. On the project website, the team describes it as an environmentally beneficial off-river reservoir that will capture excess water from major storms and save it for drier periods. This idea has been floating around since the 1950s. It was almost included in stage one of California's water management project, but the SWP eventually decided that the plans were too ambitious, especially considering the eye-watering cost of $4 billion. That's why they decided to focus their attention on other projects, like the Colossal Oroville Dam. But in the last few years, they've had a change of heart. This project is worth the cost. If they can pull it off, the site's reservoir wouldn't solve California's droughts completely, but it would certainly help. The lake could store more than two cubic kilometers of water, enough to provide a year's supply of drinking water to hundreds of thousands of California homes. So how will it be built? Workers will start with a number of dams, which will be used to plug any gaps between the hills at the edge of the valley. The two main dams will be the Sites Dam and the Golden Gate Dam, both on the eastern side of the valley, while the rest will be up in the north. Together, these dams will turn the valley into a giant waterproof tub. Next, they'll need to fill it. Usually, that's done by damming a river and letting it flood the valley. That's what happened with the Oroville Dam. The builders blocked the Feather River, then waited for the currents to fill the valley behind it. During periods of heavy rainfall, the river continues to fill the valley, keeping the reservoir topped up for future use. But the Sites Valley doesn't have any major rivers, just a couple of shallow creeks. Because of this, the new reservoir will need to be filled using a slightly different method. About 25 kilometers to the east of the valley runs the Sacramento River, the biggest river in California. During rainy months, the state is planning to suck water from the river, pipe it through fields and hills and towns, and pour it into the Sites Valley. It's like a giant water tap filling a giant bucket. During dry seasons, the water can be let out again, providing relief to nearby areas. Pumping water from the river to the valley will require a huge amount of energy, but the SWP think it's worth it, especially because they'll be making some of it back again. Whenever water is released from the reservoir, it will flow through a set of hydroelectric generators and provide approximately 80% of the power used to pump it there in the first place. Construction is currently on course to start in 2024, or at worst 2025. It will be finished six years later, in 2030 or 2031, and some people are already bemoaning the fact that it won't be ready sooner. When California was hit by those floods at the beginning of 2023, a huge volume of rainwater rushed down the Sacramento. If the site's reservoir had been up and running, it could have collected this flood water for future use, enough to supply more than 200,000 Californian households for the rest of the year. Jerry Brown, executive director of the Sites Project Authority, said this is exactly the type of scenario that Sites is being built for, short windows of extremely high flows. Without the Sites Reservoir in place, it was a missed opportunity, and people don't want to lose out again. But are there any drawbacks? 
some people think so. To pay for the project, the SWP will probably raise the price of water, with some people fearing an increase of 300%. It's unclear whether this would actually happen, but it's a source of major concern. What's the point in supplying extra water if no one can afford to buy it? Environmental groups have also questioned whether the water pumped from the Sacramento River will affect the fish that migrate along the river. When a dam is used to block a whole river, like the one at Oroville, environmental disruption is inevitable. Fish can no longer swim upriver because a wall of concrete is sitting in the way. But as an off-stream reservoir, the site's project won't actually block the Sacramento River. The only disruption will be the high-power pumps, but those will be installed with state-of-the-art fish screens to stop animals from getting sucked inside. The SWP has also promised to use some of the water collected in the site's reservoir to support local species. Many fish species breed in deep, cold pools, and during dry seasons, these pools become warm and shallow. The site's reservoir would be used to feed these pools and keep water at the proper depth and temperature for breeding. It's an important part of the project as a whole. Supporting humans is the main priority, but helping other species is a target too. There's still a chance this project won't ever be built. They haven't quite raised enough funding. But as things stand, it looks as though the reservoir will be up and running by 2030. Do you think it's a good addition to California? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear about the State Water Project, you should check out our video about the Oroville Dam. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.